get your ass in Let's bring the uh, <coughs> Thursday, March 21st, Webster Town Board meeting to order. The Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dolly, can you do roll call, please? Supervisor Clarity? Here. surrounding the accessibility of the environmental protection overlay district maps within the town. On February 9th, 2024, I submitted a four-hour request, freedom of information request, under Article 6 of the Freedom of Information Law Act uh, for those maps. And I got a really nice letter on the 13th, I'm sorry, on the 21st, indicating that it would take 20 business days to provide those maps. Um, and then I get a little letter on March 20th, yesterday, and again, there will be an additional 20 business days to conduct further in-depth research. Now, I acknowledge that the request, obviously, is, is coming uh, for a requirement of the code, essentially, so the town has specific requirements in the town code that references the e maps. So my first question is, why would it required to have a FOIA request to access a document that is referenced in the town code um, in several locations. My second question is why would it take so long to do research when the EPOD maps are something that have been developed and have been in the town for quite a while. Uh, this protected response cycle, it not only undermines the spirit of the Freedom of Information Law, under Article 6, which mandates government responsiveness and public awareness, but also hints at a larger issue within our town's administration, i.e., I believe it is constructive denial. These maps are not merely administrative documents, they are fundamental to the town's environmental integrity, um, referenced throughout the town code, and should be readily available to the public without the need for a formal request. Um, in fact, the town engineering department has a specific 
permit application called the application of the EPOD permit for disturbing the designated EPODs. How would they ever know if they can't find the mines? Are they even looking at these when they look at development projects? And if they're not, what are they doing? Uh, how is the town following its own code? How many environmentally sensitive areas have been destroyed because the town didn't bother to look at the E5 maps when approving permit applications? The inability to provide, properly provide these maps raises two alarming possibilities. Either our town is inept, unable to manage the sense of environmental regulations, or there are intentional obstructions, possibly to amend or obscure details within those maps, which may have significant legal or environmental implications. <clears throat> is the town using this research time to amend the EPOD maps? <clears throat> are they removing designated EPOD areas? Are they uh, covering up areas that have been destroyed or developed in a manner that is inconsistent with town law? I don't know. No one does. Given these concerns, I propose the immediate release of the current EPOD maps, all versions made available to the public, ensuring transparency is adhered to, and the town's environmental commitments are adhered to. A full investigation into the reasons behind the delay and difficulty in providing these maps to determine whether this is a case of incompetence or corruption. The establishment of a more transparent, efficient, or responsive FOIA request process to prevent future occurrences of such delays. The town's reputation and commitment to environmental stewardship is at stake. It is imperative that the town act decisively to restore trust and ensure actions align with the principles of transparency, accountability, and environmental protection. Thank you for considering this critical issue. Thank you, Brian. Okay, and that is the right in, like I said, first and last paper tonight. Next up on the agenda is two board meeting minutes uh, considered for approval. I have uh, <coughs> reviewed the March 7th board meeting minutes and I make a motion that we approve them. Second. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Council Bowman? Aye. Mayor Diego? Aye. Council Bowman? Aye. Aye. And I have reviewed the March 14th, 2024 Town Board Workshop minutes and make a motion that we approve those. Second. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Council Roman Wynn? Aye. Council Bowman? Aye. Council Cahill? Aye. Council Bowman? Aye. Council Bowman? Aye. Council Bowman? Aye. Council Bowman? Aye. 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 And I would like the you know, motion to pay on the bill, please. Second. Council Bowman win? Aye. Council Bankato? Aye. Council Bowman Aye. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. And I uh, read the prepaid warrants as submitted by Paul Adams, Director of Finance, and make a motion to take the Second. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Council Bowman Aye. Aye. Purchase orders are submitted by Paul Adams, the Director of Finance, and make a motion to approve those. Second. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilwoman Wynn? Aye. Councilwoman Wynn? Aye. All right. We can give you a little break. Um, Rick and Art. Probably this is your area to discuss, maybe with Paul sprinkled in, is that correct? I think we got this. All right. Let Paul off the hook. So, uh, Supervisor, this is a amendment to the novice contract. Uh, this is for site work for the uh, new digester. Uh, this is part of the uh, $81 million bond. Uh, the contractor for the Digester is able to move us up in the schedule. This work needs to get done prior to the tank being constructed, and this will help us keep us on, on track and on schedule. So the timing actually worked out well for everyone. Okay, and um, I'll admit, uh, I, I wrote this uh, agenda item, and it's, it's probably the longest agenda item I ever wrote for the Webster Herald and or for to go on social media and it was purposeful 
because I want to make sure it's kept in front of the um, citizens' eyes that, yes, we did uh, do a bond resolution back in July of 23 to move this project up to $81.5 million. And yes, if we do this amendment, which I think is the second amendment to the Navitas Energy correct. Performance Contract, that means we will be under contract for $61,979,000. Mm -hmm. um, we still have $20 million more uh, that is being negotiated, I'll say, for much better terms between Navitas and the town. Um, and we're targeting to have that done by June. Um, but we want to measure twice and cut once, I guess is the best way to describe that. Um, we don't have a second chance at this uh, for the next probably 50 years. And I know I won't be here in 50 years to win the next sewer plan. So. Um, is there any questions or comments about the board? To your, to your point, Supervisor, uh, so when this amendment uh, crossed over our uh, recognized desk, uh, we pushed it back and uh, asked them to really take a hard look at value engineering of it. Uh, there's a lot of uh, stone to go into that hole and things like that. Uh, they were able to cut out, uh, you know, about ten thousand dollars, but we'll take ten thousand dollars all day long. Uh, so they did take a hard look at it. So this is a little bit delayed, but we're looking hard at every dollar.
conversation with the board members and you two gentlemen. Um, Dave Cox from Castro uh, sent over to the board earlier this week after last Thursday's uh, presentation um, pretty much two uh, term sheets proposals, one for the engineering design and one for the architectural work that would be done in such a building. I'll be there, I don't have it in front of me, thank you. Um, the engineering uh, was estimated to be 28,460, and the architectural work was estimated at 118,500. So between, the one thing I know about campuses, and I just, I'm going to hand it off to you, Jeff, to answer any questions or discuss with the board. Um, we do these resolutions tonight. Um, I think, Kyle, you even said as the town attorney, um, we really don't have the contract terms where we're ready to sign the contract. This would be more the board doing a resolution that we, we know what the, the estimates are, we know the terms, whether that's time and materials and whatever, um, and ultimately our attorneys and peers will work out the final contract. A lot of times, Dolly, we do a resolution in the middle of March. By the time I sign a contract as a supervisor, it's not unusual that it's two or four weeks later as the attorneys do their that be an accuracy? Okay. I don't know if I can do any more preface on this, uh, but I'm, I'm, I just want to make sure that when you're talking about an aggregate of $287,000, I think what is, these are called soft costs in a municipal project. Um, that has nothing to do with the cost of when we get bids in for actually building the um, I just want to make sure the board is aware of what they'd be voting on tonight. If Paul Adams can chime in about what this means as far as where the money comes from, if it sets up as a new capital project, if Dave and or Jared can answer, you know, why those numbers are what they are and are they fait account please. Uh, in a contract or more, you know, here's actually with monthly billing and, and this and that, it could be less. Um, and certainly if it goes over, the board would have would know that well in advance to amend that happen. Does the board have any questions <coughs> for Dave Cox and or Jerry Well, you don't have the verbiage in the contract to understand that. As far as the the cost goes, well, read in the contract that the price would be not to exceed the specific amount. Are you asking me? Yes. That, that is definitely what I will, when I, whoever makes this resolution, if we vote on this, because I can't, because I am signing kind of, the verbiage has to be there not to exceed. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Both of our costs, I don't know what's Days, but I believe both of our costs, at least ours definitely, is for the full scope of the project to deliver and close out the project all the way through. Um, that cost won't go beyond that. Okay. Within those, you know, within the given timeline. Okay. And I will say this, it's going back a year or so ago, um, we did, we did something like this on San Bar Park, um, and campus was the construction manager. Now they did not start as the pre-construction, so you kind of came in like in the fourth inning of that nine inning baseball game. Here we're getting you in before the first inning, which will hopefully create a more efficient process. Yeah, it allows us to help the town with budgeting for the project and establishing that, that bonding amount prior to, to uh, moving forward with, you know, how far we get into design. So it, our goal is to help with the planning aspect of that project so that the town is in a good spot and we help with the design phase of it and make sure you know the decisions being made as far as design are, are cost effective and efficient for everything the town's trying to achieve. So um, along that process we're doing estimating right along to make sure we're staying within whatever the given budget is. Yeah and I, I will say that like I said 35 minutes last week on this, so there, you know, 
to go back and look at the tape or anything about you. There's a lot of discussion on this. It's pretty robust. Um, Chris Bilo is in the room tonight. He's our Parks and Rec Commission. Um, we referenced you, Chris. Your ears were probably ringing last time. I watched. Week. I watched. Right? You did, so you saw. Um, Chris and I have had a lot of, uh, <coughs> a lot, half a dozen meetings with the prospective restaurants who are our owner over the last year. Um, tentatively, if these resolutions are done tonight, it gives the ability for Passero Associates and Campus to actually, as soon as tomorrow morning, sit down with that restaurant tour of our owners, engineers, and architects, and really start working. They can't do that for us before we sure. engage them. Sure. Um, and as I said last week, I think this is a community that is very anxious to see the restaurant bar down at Sandbar move along. Um, I don't know how else to explain that. <clears throat> Paul, any comments on where the money gets slotted at this point before a bond resolution is done? Because we wouldn't even know what to do a bond resolution for because the building hasn't gotten <coughs> yet. Right. Uh, yeah, there are actually uh, two grants. There are DASTI grants, which are currently being repurposed by New York State, which I think will be able to apply toward this project. Uh, the balance will be financed with a serial bond, bond anticipation note short term, and then eventually a serial bond. It's a uh, public-private partnership, because you've got a private entity uh, involved, which makes the bond taxable. Uh, we're estimating that the interest rate on that will be 4.6% and it will be a 15-year bond. So, so we'll borrow whatever we need to cover the net cost after the grants, after paying the consultants and Jenny, do you have any questions or? No. I asked last week. Anybody ask any questions? Senators? What's the total amount again? Because it's not written down here. 136,000. Is that correct, Anna? Actually, campuses is 136. Yep. The engineering for pasture is 28,460, and the architecture Pastor was 118,500 for a total of 286,960. And as long as we're on that break, I said these are the next two resolutions. Uh, we would actually do this as three resolutions one for campus, um, for the reconstruction, and throughout the process service there, whatever you call it, the whole hidden book. I think Pastor Rose has got to be broken into two independent resolutions. Two independent engagements, one for the engineering design, one for the architect. Is that how you see it, Dave? Yeah, that's, that works. Okay. Just to put a little bit more pressure on whichever board member, if we move to making motions on this, you got to add the not to exceed. Yeah. We can give you the dollar amounts on each. I'll do the, the my number five. I would move, make a motion to retain campus construction management to do a pre-construction bid development in the restaurant building at Sand Park Park <clears throat> and have the supervisor sign a contract. The fee is not to exceed $136,000. Second. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilwoman Wright? Aye. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Mm -hmm. Engineering design, you just said, is actually
services for the restaurant building at Sandbar Park and have the supervisor sign the contract not to exceed $118,500. Second. Councilwoman Wright? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilwoman Wynn? Aye. Supervisor Aye. So do you have a meeting with the restaurants who are their architect at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, gentlemen? We're going to get to work. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ah. Man, this is an interesting meeting tonight, Dolly. Um, so I want to make sure that the town board members uh, ask any questions and are fully uh, understanding this next resolution. Um, I, I, I'll, I know that I sent an email that kind of explained how this all plays out, but I'll try to give a succinct version of this. Professional Ambulance Billing LLC, uh, PAB we'll call them because everything's got to be an acronym, right? Um, they are the billing company for Penfield Volunteer Ambulance. Um, and anybody who's been following our EMS issue in Webster the last couple of years, and especially the last 90 days, um, knows that we have started to migrate Penfield Volunteer Ambulance into town. Uh, in fact, on January 13th, or I think it was on January 10th, board meeting or whatever, we did a resolution to award uh, per se, Penfield Volunteer Ambulance, the West Webster Fire District, uh, where they can operate the EMS in that district, because they have the commensurate New York State Authorities Certificate of Needs um, to do that in West Webster. Now in East Webster, the Northeast Joint Fire District, um, since January 13th, uh, approximately 35 to 40 percent of the ambulance calls have been handled by the town's current outsourced EMS agency, uh, Northeast Quadrant Advanced Life Support, NEQALS. But NEQALS, um, the reason why they've only been able to handle 35 to 40 percent of our, those calls is because on December 29th, 2023, they issued the town a 90 day notice saying they are done being our outsourced EMS agency essentially by March 28th. Anybody who's been in a professional uh, you know, business, been an employee of any place, when you make that type of notice, the employees uh, probably don't wait till the 90th day. They start to leave. So the EMTs and paramedics have started to leave meet walls, and that's why really their staffing is at a point where really they, they've been able to cover about 35% to 40% of the calls. What has filled that void in East Webster is called mutual aid and predominantly Penfield Volunteer Ambulance. Now over the last two months, as we prepare for March 29th, uh, the day after, uh, Neepals is officially not servicing any of Webster anymore. Uh, Councilman Cahill, who is our EMS uh, liaison in town, and myself, and Paul Adams, may I add, have been <laughs> in a lot of meetings with Monroe County uh, EMS government, governance, New York State EMS governance, um, Penfield Volunteer Ambulance, um, setting up basically the structure that will be in place on March 29th. And I'm, I'm happy to say, with seven or eight days to go, I think we're pretty close to, to, to getting it done. Now, interestingly enough, the, the billing company for Penfield Volunteer Ambulance, they need enough time to work with Paul Adams, the Penfield Volunteer Ambulance, and the 911 queue in Monroe County. They're going to need seven or eight days to get all that minutia done in the queues and the, I don't know, so that on March 29th at midnight, they hit the ground running that every EMS call that comes into East Webster will be synced, if you want to call it, to this relationship between Webster and Penfield Volunteer Ambulance. So, that is why we're a bit putting the cart before the horse on this one. Um, 
because we really want to show the, the authorities that, um, yeah, the town board has acknowledged that we are uh, going to be in a contract with them. Um, so they will start to sit down with Paul and PAB to set this up for March 29th. Now the contract, and I think the board has, has seen it, one of the, the, the no-risk aspects of this is that the town isn't paying any money in the contract to PAB. Right in the contract it shows that Penfield Volunteer Ambulance is essentially paying the fee to PAB. So when it does kick in, on March 29th, any of that billing uh, services is paid for by Penfield Volunteer Ambulance. Now, if we, next week, I'm just giving everybody a, a teaser here, next week uh, at our special board meeting on March 28th at 6.30 p.m. in this room, um, there is a, a resolution on the agenda to have the supervisor sign the contract between the town of Webster, Webster Emergency Medical Services, and Penfield Volunteer Ambulance to be our outsourced ambulance um, EMS agency in the Northeast Joint Fire District. The town board does that resolution and passes it. <laughs> Four hours later, Penfield Volunteer Ambulance is the outsourced EMS agency in Northeast Joint Fire District. If the town board, for whatever reason, seven days from now doesn't do that, it makes this resolution tonight somewhat of a moot point because if Penfield Volunteer Ambulance is not covering East Webster, this contract is for services that don't exist. So how much confusion did I just create, you think, Paul and John? I followed it, but I'm on the inside. Okay. John, you're the EMS liaison. Do you have any? You can't have any questions. You might have comments that go beyond what I said. Now, I just that was a question that you want to address. The, the contract that we potentially will sign at the next board meeting. And then I'm happy with you explaining that. It, it, uh, it will be a short-term contract <clears throat> while we are developing the metrics and the language of what will be a long-term project, which will take probably till the end of the year. And there is a committee, um, it's the same committee that was working with, working on the business plan um, for, for EPEDS. So that same committee has agreed to get together to formulate what will be a long-term contract with Penfield, if Penfield is chosen. There's going to be some, what's called a request for interest sent out to other ambulances in Monroe County to solicit their interest in this process. But that's why we want to emphasize that this contract that we may sign, if the board approves it next week, is short term till the end of the year. Well, I think that makes sense. It's very important. Clearly, it's very important that we have EMS coverage, and there really wasn't a lot of time to you know, turn on a dime with 90 days. And I think the team has done an amazing job at turning this around and, and putting forward a viable solution that will help ensure our community stays safe. As as the work that John just described is unfolding. Yeah, I, like I said earlier, I, where we're at at this point was seven days ago, I, I could never imagine we'd be, in, in my opinion, in as good a shape as we are. I probably just jinxed myself to next Thursday. No. But, and, and I could keep going back to John Cale and to Paul Adams. They really have done the, the blocking and tackling on this in the last 80 plus days. Um, and really, I, I can say that it, it, it looks as though we're going to be in a position um, that I can say, and this is not just a subjective opinion, um, and I won't get into de details on this, but if anybody ever wants to pull me aside and ask me to elaborate on it, I'll do it off what 
whatever. Um, if you live in the town of Webster or you're in the town of Webster on April 1st, this is not an April Fool's Day joke, and you have to call for an ambulance, and hopefully you don't have to, if I, you know, but if you have to call for an ambulance, I think what we are putting in place tangibly, not my opinion, not subjectively, tangibly, you are in a better position as a patient on April 1st, 2024, calling an ambulance in 35 square miles of Webster than you were on November 1st, 2023. And those the tangible aspects of that as far as the ambulances and where those ambulances are coming from compared to where your house is, the closer they are to your house, the quicker they get there. I think you all know that seconds matter in the EMS. John and Paul, um, I kind of feel like it's the Beatles, um, they kind of are on this one. They've really done a good job of working with the Monroe County, New York State EMS governance and Penfield Volunteer Ambulance. Some of the fire districts in town that, you know, we are setting up a short-term situation that is a better situation in, 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 tangibly on April 1st when you call the ambulance than November uh, 1st, 2023, six months ago. That's all I got to say. I got to sign this contract, so. So I would move it. Make a motion to retain uh, Professional Ambulance Billing LLC to do the billing for EMS for Webster Emergency Medical Services and have the supervisor sign the contract. Second. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilman Wright? Aye. Aye. Supervisor Perry? Aye. All right. I think we're getting down to. Ones that won't need a lot of uh, explanation. Although the next one with Rick Canale and Art here and Paul, you're not going to see this resolution in too many more years, huh? In a different form, maybe. So before we make this motion, can I make, ask a question if you two gentlemen with the police just give a, an explanation as to what the cost of sludge hauling has progressed in the past five years? where it's projected to go in the next four to, four to five to ten years, and also as far as landfills accepting sludge, what direction, in your professional opinion and knowledge, what direction is that going? Mm -hmm. um, yes, um, obviously this, this fact of the sludge hauling was the driving factor for us for the water resource recovery version of this upgrade that we're going through right. um, versus the asset renewal part. And as you touched on the last five years, we've gone from $65 a wet ton to $130 in five years. That's double right. um, in cost. And we do not see that going down anytime soon. Um, landfills are closing, um, so it's supply and demand. And even DEC and regulatory agencies are starting to rank down what they want in landfills um, in the version of municipal sludge. So um, this. Um, this contract, we're looking to do a two-year contract with uh, two one-year um, um, renewals. But we're adding into this contract, which we haven't had before, is we're actually for two prices because probably in the middle of this two-year contract is when we'll have our dryer up and running. Yeah. Um, so we're looking for um, the current price for our what we consider 30% solids, which means it's 70% water, which adds a lot of weight to hauling. This new project will be producing a 90% solid, it's only 10% water. So the reduction right there in hauling costs would, um, would be as, you know, um, large. Um, we're looking even to give it away, so it may not um, be a hauling cost at all. But also what we have in here, or we're putting in here, as we don't have before, is an out. Um, we want to be able to get out of this contract. Right. Um, and we didn't have that before. We've already talked to the current one who has it, and they see that language and others. So we're looking to put in there that we give them 90 day notice, we can cease the contract because this product will become viable um, and it may be no whole different route, so not even to landfill. So. What did we spend last year on hauling, approximately? Um, about 400,000? Yeah, I think we'll put more than 400,000. Okay. Well, I'll give you guys credit for your foresight with the, uh, the drying facility that we would be having as far as reducing our expenses significantly when it comes to hauling. I think I recall um, 
be able to accept other sludge from other facilities and dry it in our facility for a we were We were looking at that, utilizing some, maybe some excess capacity in the dryer, but once we got into the regulations with DEC that's ramping down for the forever chemicals, PFAS yeah. and PFOs, um, and we, so we took the initiative to do our own sampling, and we saw that we're below all thresholds that they're putting out there, mm -hmm. and we said, you know what, we don't really decide, we don't want to bring in someone else's problem right. and affect our byproduct and our class A fertilizer. So what we did was, in the savings of that, we increased the size of the digester a bit, which will help us bring in outside liquid waste gotcha. and high shrink waste, which will increase revenue and not really affect our class A biosystem. Thank you. So, great questions, great comments, John. Um, I was writing as fast as you were answering, Rick, but I, I missed something. The dryer, once it's installed in that process, will take a current 70% water? Or was it yes. 70% of the sludge that is taken away that costs $130 a ton or whatever is still water. Yeah. yeah. Um, this new drying mechanism, whatever, will get that down to 10 percent. Yes. And we may not even have to, sh to ship it away because in other communities that have this, it's fertilizer. Well, that would be the end goal. But not have to go to landfill at all. Return it back to the earth. What does that fertilizer use? It's nitrogen phosphorus found in there for, you know, it could be for turf farms, crops. Soil amendments, and you think the timing is perfect with Perlet coming, and it can be help you know fertilize the farmers around in the agriculture. Okay, um, Jenny, any comments or questions on this one? Make a motion to solicit bids for sludge hauling to be advertised in the March 27, 2024 edition of the Webster Herald. Second. Supervisor Clarity? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilwoman Lynn? Aye. Councilwoman Lynn? Aye. And, and I don't mean, I take it there's a lot of other places that you advertise <laughs> than the Webster Herald. To your point, Supervisor, uh, we reached out and we'll reach out with Dolly to five different uh, companies. Thank you. That's uh, all. Last time that we had one, uh, one well, last time we did this kind of one response. It's a bit of a rhetorical question. I mean, I love the Webster Herald, but yep. I don't know if the companies that have been on this stuff are subscribers to the Webster Herald. Fair enough. Legally, we have, to. we have to put it in the newspaper that we have the work in there. So, right. Okay, uh, we're getting down to the end of it, right? Um, oh, well, come on, Pat, this is your night. Do you want to come up and say anything or? I don't think there's questions. Okay, well, uh, for those at home, Pat Stevens, our highway superintendent, is in the audience tonight. And uh, this next resolution um, culminates really a two year process plus of uh, basically making sure that every residential and commercial industrial property in, uh, in Webster, um, for lack of better terms, is paying their fair share into the drainage maintenance and projects that Pat and his staff have to do at the time. Um, any I don't have any questions. Yeah, no, that's been covered, been covered in the workshop a couple times. I Public think. hearing two weeks ago. Uh, nobody's came to say anything. I see that as kind of it's a good thing. Right. <clears throat> okay. Well, I'm going to make a motion to uh, to enact a local law to revise the Webster Town Code Chapter 146 drainage control to include commercial and industrial properties. Second. Sorry. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Councilwoman Wright? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilwoman Williams? Aye. Okay, well, proving the old saying that the only constant in life is change, um, two weeks ago we were here for a public hearing regarding uh, changing our code. 
uh, essentially on one-time tie-in fees to our uh, sanitary sewer collection system and treatment plant uh, on Phillips Road. Um, to basically recognize large industrial users and make sure that what we're charging them is commensurate with uh, what they're coming in with. Um, at about 5 o'clock today, some things came up between many attorneys, I'll say to Kyle on this, for the town and for other parties that said that the, the wording of the code changes that we did a public hearing on really need to be augmented. There was an unintentional uh, wording of it that could have problems for us in the future. And it's not something that we can just say, okay, well, let's just erase that part and move on. We can't do that. Um, we have to really, it's Groundhog's Day, we have to go back and start the process again of doing a resolution to set a public hearing on this, have the public hearing, and then subsequently decide if we're going to change the code uh, on this uh, for the new verbiage. Um, so, first thing I'm going to do is make a motion to table uh, the local law change to sections 257-165 and 257-166 of the Webster and Town Code. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilwoman Wynn? Aye. Councilwoman Brown? Aye. I'm going to add this resolution. I'm going to make a motion to schedule a public hearing for Thursday, April 4th, 2024, at the Vanning Court House Town Board room right here at 7.30 p.m. to consider a local law change of section 257-165 and 257-166 of the Webster Town Code and to publish that change in the Wednesday, March 27th Webster Herald edition. Second. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilwoman Wynn? Aye. Councilwoman Brown? Aye. We have one item left here, gang, and usually we have the liaison, but Patty is not here, so I'm going to let it rip. Uh, make a motion to approve the following items for recycling from the sewer department. Uh, five electrical disconnects. The tag number is 2065, 2064, 2066, 2067, and 2063. Second. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Councilwoman Wright? Aye. Councilwoman Wynn? Aye. Councilwoman Cahill? Aye. All right. Not that bad, Dolly, for all the changes and the moving and shaking tonight, huh? Well, I gotta start at the for our round table, Rick Canale. I mean, you, you're up, number one. What's um, up? Should I follow that up? Um, just a uh, lot going on at the plant. We started our own permit and separated from the village as of March 1st, um, but we've been working with them a lot. Them taking on this, but they haven't had to deal with before. Um, it's a learning curve from them, but um, we've been assisting them in this process also. Um, so, along with us getting used to our new permit, so and keeping our lead guys and operate through. Come on, Eric. Well, he's in it all. Well, you know what? I will. I will jump in. So, uh, staff has taken advantage of the good weather. We've actually been out uh, flushing much earlier than we have in the past. Uh, problem mains, problem laterals. We've gotten into uh, some of our pump station maintenance uh, that we can do uh, with good weather. We get the truck out, we get the new truck out. Uh, and uh, so that seems to be working well. I've been working on the town's uh, annual financial report, which gets filed each year by April 30th to New York State. Um, <clears throat> This year, they've actually come up with a new software program to report everything. The, the previous software had been in use since 1991, so after 32 uh, years, I think it was time for an upgrade, so it's a little easier to work with. Um, so that'll be filed. And if, if you don't, if you are not aware, uh, you can actually find towns, villages, school districts, annual financial reports on the Office of State Controller's website. 
uh, so it's all out there for anyone that uh, complies and reports uh, by the deadline. And it goes back many years. I think you can also find uh, audits that are, that have been done at various towns and villages too. Lots of mulch leaves available at the highway department, and you can call and they'll deliver it for a small fee, I believe $50 for a truckload, which is a super duper deal for some mulch, and it helps uh, reuse and repurpose all of those leaves that the town picks up for its residents in the fall. And, and Chris is here as well, so I'm not gonna leave out parks and recreation, they have a beautiful gym with all new cardio equipment, so check out that. And, and lastly, I feel this is just one that popped in my head. Um, help control the pet population and have your pets spayed or neutered. That's not a lot of people. That's Bob Barker. That's Bob Barker. You got it right. <coughs> all these poor, poor pets that I saw something and when I was doing the bills, and I was just made me think about that, you know, as part of the animals, um, many are loved, some are take care of them. So, anybody watching at home tonight, um, our town attorney Charlie Genesi has been on this new medication, and it's amazing what it has done. <laughs> this guy, <laughs> really. <laughs> Kyle Taylor, uh, who usually is our attorney for the planning department, is pinch hitting for Charlie tonight. Anything to add to this? Nothing to add. Pleasure to be here. Be yeah. here next week uh, while Charlie's in the enjoys a well deserved that month. You saw a good curveball meeting tonight, Kyle. Yeah, you sure did. Get it out of here. Jenny! Well, there's a couple things, um, like always. The museum, you know, please come out to your community and support the museum. You got a lot of collectible items. And the library, they have a lot of special free events, you know, for young um, family and young, you know, children to come out and support them. And they wouldn't be exist, you know, because of you or the community, that's, they are obsessed. And also yesterday I was in Albany um, with lo other locals, government official to lobby for more state aid, AIMS funding, and it stands for AIM and Initiative for Municipalities, and it is part of the state budget every year. The governor recommended an extra $50 million over the next two years that could be used for water, sewer, and other projects. So hopefully, you know, um, with the attendees that you know we have myself and a lot of uh, local electives officials that we have a positive influence by talking with leaders of both parties our community thanks Judy so you give Paul and I a lot of credit for looking forward to these meetings with I feel voluntary and ambulance but you're due quite a bit of credit too. So, you know, a lot of these meetings were put together by yourself and Dan and Glenn, and we appreciate everything that you're doing with these ones. Jen, you and I have gotten to know each other in the last four plus years. You should know. I'm just worried that it's going to go sideways, so I want to point back to this. Hey, well, Jen and Paul. Yeah. I mean, they were the ones that did it. And presidential primary is April. Second? Yeah. Yes. Coming up fast. I think you just handed the baton to Dolly because it's certainly early voting. Early voting yeah. starts Saturday. Um, yeah. okay. We're able to come here to Justice Town Court. Just outside the town board. I think. Was Mike? Pardon? Yes. Hey, yes. I would think the one thing that everybody's got to remember about that because it happens every year. If you're a registered Republican, you can vote the Republican primary. If you're a registered Democrat, you can vote the Democrat. If you're not registered one of those, if you're going to show up, you're going to want to vote. The message will come from the people there saying you can't. It happens all the time. It's amazing. 
Well, that's it. Uh, I say that we are going to adjourn. So I have a question.